is the Thunderbolt 5 SSD really worth it? Or should you go and buy a Thunderbolt or a regular USB external SSD? Well, in this video, we are gonna run multiple very interesting tests, both the speeds, transfers of large and small files, and see which one you should buy. Now, when Apple launched these new M4 series of laptops, we were super excited that they had Thunderbolt 5 built in, and that goes up to 120 gigabit per second, up to three times faster than what we had before in terms of transfer speeds. And this OWC Envoy Ultra is the first Thunderbolt 5 SSD that promises 6,000 megabytes per second, which is insane. Now here I have an M4 Pro MacBook Pro, and I also have a regular M4, which does not support Thunderbolt 5, but we're still going to test the performance. So if you get a Pro or a, the new Maxes, you'll have Thunderbolt 5. Now also testing, I I have my Sabrent four terabyte Thunderbolt SSD, which I've had for about five years now. That's awesome. And I have our recommended Sabrent Nano, which is such a great value. We'll have all these linked below. Now, plugging in our Nano, I have to say, I love that for 180 bucks right now, you can get two terabytes of storage and just how insanely small it is. And this thing obviously works with any machine because it uses USB. And right here on the right, we're just over a thousand on this machine. And for read speeds, I consistently get about 820. Now, of course, on the box, they always quote higher because it's the theoretical speed, but I also love that you can connect it with a regular USB-A cable, which is included, and the fact that you get the nice silicone case on the outside. You also get the cover with the Thunderbolt drive, but of course, it's a lot larger and it has to be plugged in with USB Type-C. And looking at the speeds, the write speed is almost twice as fast and the read speed is more than double. So that right there is a nice improvement. And now busting out this bad boy, I mean, this thing is so heavy, it is like a brick. And as you guys can see, the Thunderbolt 5 cable is built into it. Now, that's gonna be a downside for some people because you could worry about the long-term reliability. But I will say, with some of my other drives like this one, after using it for a year or two, this port is starting to get wiggly. So if I bump it, it could disconnect. So having it built in will help with that. Let's go ahead and open up our Blackmagic disk speed test. Uh, but I will also say that unfortunately, this is a short cable. So you can't just go and grab a long cable and have various lengths like you can with the other drives. And look at that guys, my goodness. I have not seen speeds this fast ever with an external SSD. And in terms of write speed, that is 6.2 times faster than our USB Nano and almost three times faster than my Thunderbolt SSD. Dang, that is crazy. Now on the box, they actually quote over 6,000 megabytes per second. And I went ahead and tested it on an M4 Max one terabyte SSD model. It was just barely faster. Uh, so it could depend on the test. And I wanna go ahead and try a one gigabyte test here. Oh my goodness. Oh, 5,600 from fourth, oh, 5,773. Okay, so the read's not changing much, but the write speed is almost 6,000 here. So it probably depends on the file size. And now my question is, what happens if we connect this Thunderbolt 5 SSD to a laptop that only supports Thunderbolt 4 or 3, which have the same speeds for data transfer, instead of a M4 Pro or a Max. So this is the base M4 for 1599. It is a really great deal. And now let's run our test here. And okay, 2575, 3000 on the read. Let's let the right go one more time. Oh. Little bit faster, but it's settling in right here. So let's call it at 2577 write and 3049 read. So that is 35% faster write and 65% faster read 
Compared to using one of these Thunderbolt 3 or 4 SSDs, doesn't matter because they're both the same transfer speed. So even if you have an older device and you wanna buy a new SSD and you want it to be future-proof, you are gonna get faster speeds close to the fastest that you'll get with the, one of these machines internally anyways. And now for my next test, we're back on the M4 Pro and I have this folder that's 121.5 gigabytes. This is our PC test folder with a bunch of small and large files. And let's go ahead and drag and drop that onto our Nano USB drive. I have a timer over here. It's showing us about two minutes here. And then it showed three minutes for a bit. And the way these SSDs work is if you're transferring a large amount of data, they will actually slow down over time because of uh, SLC caching or because of heating. You guys see how small this is? This one's larger. And one benefit with the OWC is that because it's so large, it's all aluminum with these little heat fins. It can withstand heat a lot better for long long-term performance. And it ended up taking three minutes and nine seconds, which I would say is not too bad. Let's go ahead and grab our Thunderbolt Sabrent. And that one took two minutes and four seconds. Honestly, I was expecting it to be twice as fast as the cheap Nano was, but I guess it was slowing down, maybe heating up or whatever. So let's go ahead and eject this one. And for the Thunderbolt 5, Let's hit the timer there. Less than a minute is what it is showing. It is flying. And that took exactly one minute to transfer 121.5 gigs. So we literally have um, a tripling of speed or a doubling of speed and even a one minute improvement. That's insanely fast. You don't even have time to go grab anything when you're transferring files. And for our last test, let's do the opposite. Let's go from the SSD to the MacBook. Okay guys, this is, insane here. It is going so fast. Wow. Slowing down a little bit here at the end. I'm guessing the SLC cache is maxing out on this 512 machine. I think on a one terabyte, it would actually be a little bit quicker, uh, but we're almost done here. And we got a minute and 29, so longer to go off of it onto this MacBook. And here are the results from the other two. Surprisingly, the Nano took two minutes and 34 seconds faster than our other test. And the four terabyte was almost the same time, two minute and 29. So if you're writing from an SSD to the actual machine, this was only one minute slower than the ultra fast Thunderbolt 5, which took a minute and 30 for 121.5 gigs. That is insane. And our other Thunderbolt one, well, it took almost the same time. That is just mind blowing. So is it worth buying this ultra expensive Thunderbolt 5 SSD for two terabytes, it's 400 bucks compared to 180 and it's 600 for a four terabyte. Honestly, guys, I say no. It is insanely fast, but because it's so expensive, because it's so big and bulky, because the cable is built in, I would just buy one of these if you could have a little bit of patience. For video editing, this is more than fast enough to edit off of it. So unless you need to transfer files ultra quickly and you need to go from your MacBook to an SSD very fast and head out or something like that, this is just kind of overkill until we get some cheaper options that are smaller, lighter, and most importantly, cheaper. I would probably stay away and just pick up this one that we've been recommending for such a long time. Even though the speeds in Blackmagic Speed Test were slow, in the real world, it does a good job and it's so tiny and such a great value. So thank you guys for watching. Let me know your thoughts down in the comments section below. Click that circle above to subscribe, check out one of those videos and we'll see you in the next one.